start with the meditation. If you're in a place where it is appropriate for you to do so, you can close your eyes and relax your body. Take some deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. And with every inhale, feel more light entering your body and mind. And with every exhale, letting go of all tension and anything that you do not want. And we picture ourselves now on top of a beautiful mountain in the center of a circular grove of trees. And inside the center of this grove, a beautiful bonfire is blazing forth, lighting us and the grove up with a sacred golden light. We recognize that this is the light of perfect love and perfect trust, which burns away everything that is unlike itself. And we lovingly release into this fire anything that we do not want, anything that is unlike the perfect love and perfect trust. We are free and at peace. And into the sacred space, we call upon the presence of our Divine Father and Mother, and we ask that they join with us together, along with all the teachers and the angels and the guides. We are very grateful for this time that we get to spend together. And we dedicate this time that we spend together to them so that we become more happy, more peaceful, and more loving people. Thank you very much. Blessed be. In my tradition, in, in our Book of Shadows, we have a little line that says, the craft needs no defense. There's another line in there that, that says that no one person can speak for the craft. So what that means is the craft is more immense, is bigger and larger than any one person. All that to say that when you're looking for something, quote, authentic, what you should be looking for in regards to whether it's witchcraft or anything is, does it get results? Does it get results? And it's, it's very fascinating because what happens with the craft, I think, is what happens with a lot of things, is whatever's popular is what people decide is authentic. And that everything else that's happened for centuries prior to that, that you that may or may not be known, is sort of disregarded as as something that's that's inauthentic, etc. But remember that nobody knows, nobody necessarily knows all of the the, the different aspects of the craft. If you're practicing something that's not part of the mainstream. Very often in this day and age, because of social media, it's especially uh, people, if they don't recognize it as being part of the current zeitgeist, they just automatically you know, write it off as being inauthentic. When in reality, a lot of what's being called witchcraft these days, I wouldn't say that it's not authentic, but it's very new. It's just very new in the scheme of things. For instance, um, if you don't have the... The quarters, the, if you don't call the quarters, well, you're not authentic. If you don't cast a circle, you're not authentic. If you don't use a god and a goddess, then you're not authentic. If, you don't, uh, if, you, if you're not pagan, you're not authentic. Those kinds of things. And it's not so much that people are nefarious about that. It's just that they don't know any better. They just don't know any better. They, don't, they, they just assume that what they read in books is true. Um, what was big in the in the seventies and eighties, especially, is well, who initiated you? Where did your initiation come from? And that was really big in my tradition, and and it probably still is. It's just like, well, if you don't come from a you know from a a, a line of ordination that we recognize, then you know then you're not really part of the craft as we practice it. And that has its merit, you know. If you're if you're trying to keep a tradition. Together, yeah, you want to make sure that whatever is in that tradition or in that system, you know, stays stays uh, a copacetic, so that that you don't, you know, that you don't water things down. But still, that's not speaking for the entirety of all the craft. On the other side of that, the the other extreme of that is this idea of, well, you're right, nobody can speak for the craft. There's no. There's nobody can tell who's authentic or inauthentic. So basically, do whatever you want. 
anything goes, and we'll call it witchcraft. And I guess that has its place too, but without a system and without sound principle to back up whatever it is that you're doing, you're not going to get the results that you want. And in my perspective, witchcraft is not so much a religion as it is a way of living and a set of practices that brings about specific results. From my point of view, magic and witchcraft are practical. They bring results. You should be able to get verifiable and repeatable results with what you do. Otherwise, you're kind of wasting your time. I'm very supportive of people having the freedom to practice as they will, obviously. But at the same time, I also acknowledge the importance of systematized working that has some sound metaphysical and magical principles attached to it so that you get the results that you're seeking. So there's a balance that we must strive for. Just because somebody says, this is what you, sh- you should do, doesn't make it so. You, should, you, you need to look at the, what's the underlying principle. And if the underlying principle there is sound, and it gets results for you, that's great. But just because someone says, you must do this, or you must do that, or this is not, or this is uh, authentic, uh, it's meaningless. And I'll give you an example. Somebody just the other day uh, said, well, it's disrespectful for you to shuffle the cards the way you do, because you're using a Vegas-type shuffle, and you, and you shouldn't do that. That's disrespecting your tarot cards. And I thought, well, who made that rule up? <laughs> I've been shuffling the way I've been shuffling since I was probably 14 years old, And I've never once felt like I disrespected my cards, but at the same time, my cards are cards. They're not sentient beings that need respect. I mean, I respect them. I mean, I don't rip them up and stuff. I put them away. I make sure that, you know, just like I respect all of my belongings, but they don't really require respect like I respect a person. And not only that, but the whole idea that the tarot has its basis in some sort of mystical tradition, has sort of been debunked. To belittle the idea that, that what it started out as as a game is actually more disrespectful to the, to the cards. You know, if you, if you understand that the cards started out as a game, they started, and they still play tarot. Tarot is still a game that's played. There's tarot tournaments in, in, in France. So it's a game. And, and as a game, it, it, was, it, it also, just like with playing cards, was used to do divination, and then later uh, we used esoterically. It would seem to work out well esoterically, but it wasn't started out as an esoteric model. So to divorce the tarot cards completely from their origins as a game is much more disrespectful of the tarot cards than shuffling them in, in a certain way. When you're out there looking at these websites, listening to these so-called experts, reading these books, remind yourself frequently that they may or may not be authentic. They may or may know not may or may not know what they're talking about, and it's okay to question everything. And the bottom line is the only proof you get is your results. So my recommendation to people is rather than just believing people and putting people on some sort of guru pedestal, it's just if if somebody has something that they're doing, try it out. Test it. And if it works for you, great. If it doesn't work for you, move on. When we're going in with the um, the idea of the craft being authentic or inauthentic, you have to understand that the craft is so vast. It's so vast. It's like saying there's only one way to play music. There's only one way to paint a picture. The craft, to me, is more of an art and less of a religion. It's more of a of an art form and less of a religion. And I know that it's been popularized that the craft is a religion for probably a good 30 years now, 40 years maybe. You can work the craft as a religion. You can. There's nothing, there's nobody that says that you can't, but not everybody does. Not everybody does. There are all kinds of witches. There's witches from every single culture. Every single culture has it. 
And to say that there's only one way, you know, is is showing a lot of um, disrespect to a, a, to a great many different cultures. So we need to recognize that there is unity in diversity in the craft, and that's just sort of like how it's always been. And at the same time, it doesn't just mean anything goes. That that just do what you what, do whatever you want. It's a very smart idea to find some some sort of tradition or practice that you seem to resonate with. And we're so lucky in this day and age because so much is available to us. Because when I was coming up, my tradition it was the only one I I, I knew of, just because that was the only one that was out there at the time. So I mean, we're really lucky. There's so much available to us. There's so so many things. So if you find something that seems to resonate with you, and you give it a try. Now, there are traditions that teach that you study their system, you know, for periods of time. You get your first degree after a year and a day, and then a lot of times you can get another degree after another year of of of, of study. Most of these, uh, you know, many of the, the the witchcraft traditions have like two or three degrees in them of of um, of initiation, and you got to respect that because it, that's the tradition. But it's important to understand the difference between a tradition and the craft as a whole. For instance, studying our basic angel magic course, you're very disciplined in a specific system that way. You could just go out and just make up your own thing and just, you know, just like look stuff up on the internet. Well, today I'm going to do this and I'm going to call this angel and I'm going to do that thing and I'm going to do this thing. And you might get results. I mean, you might get good results. I don't know. But it's it's not what we teach. We teach something through a very systematic way of working and, and it's very structured. And because that kind of structure builds power. But don't mistake a structure for a dogma. You know, we're very structured. We're very kind of limited. This We only work with these eight angels for the most part. And we only do it on this these days of the week. And we don't work on, we don't work on the dark moons. And we don't work on the eclipses. That's because that's how our system is built. And, our, and if you work within that system, you get a lot of strength within that system. If uh, just like any kind of art, if you really are are structured, you can you can uh, find great discipline within that structure and get great results rather than just whatever, just the, than just doing whatever or making things up as you go along, right? But that doesn't mean that that's the one true way to work angel magic, and it's so important to understand that there's a difference, and I don't think people get it sometimes. Uh, with a witch's primer, I'm very clear. This is how you're going to build your power. You're going to build your power through these different, you know, these different exercises. You're going to do these these things, and you're going to be more powerful. And as a result of that, you're going to be able to have more success with your spell casting, and it works beautifully. But that doesn't mean that a witch's primer is the only way to build the power. It's not that a witch's primer is the one true way of of witchcraft. It's just that if you're going to do a witch's primer, you should do it. You should, you should honor the system and stick with it and go through those 18 weeks and see if you didn't get, get more powerful and then move, for, move on to the next thing. All that to say that the craft needs no defense is a very big and important, bold statement that, that you, not, you need to remind yourself of constantly that when you don't need to defend the craft on its behalf if you think that somebody is doing something that's inauthentic or whatever. And on the other side of it, you don't need to defend your practice. You don't need to defend your practice. People don't understand what they're talking about half the time. Remember when Jesus said, you know, forgive them for they know not what they do? That's the case. They don't know. They don't know what they're saying. So it's not their fault. I'm not, you know, you don't get mad at them. But but you don't need to defend yourself. You don't need to defend yourself. A lot of the times you see, before I came online, I never had to defend myself because I kept everything secret. A lot of times I think what, what the problem is, is that, that too much stuff is out there <laughs> all at once, and it gets very, very confusing. It just really, really gets very, very confusing. So I recommend that people just take a step back Take a few deep breaths when they're looking at the craft and realize that just because it's online doesn't necessarily mean it's that it's right. Just because it's online and everybody says, do this, do that, do the other, that, that I have to necessarily jump on the bandwagon. What I recommend that you do is find 
a system that is attractive to you and just work it for a while and see if see if you don't get some magical musculature. If not, move on to something else. Scrap that one and move on to something else. You should be getting practical results very quickly through any kind of magical system. And if you're not, then don't waste your time with it. You should be able to, t- t- to know after a couple weeks of trying something, whether it's working for you. It's not, it, you don't need to dedicate yourself for years to something. You should be able to get some sort of indication that you're on the right track. Yeah, ultimately you'll need to to develop more power and more skill in order to have even even stronger results, but you should get some sort of results within a couple of weeks. Otherwise, it's maybe maybe not the right system for you. Some of us use the the planetary magic. Some of us use earth magic. Some of us use a pantheistic uh, form of uh, deity. Some of us are monotheistic. Some of us are omnitheistic. Some of us are atheistic. Some of us are Satanists. Some of us are Christians. Some of us are Druids. Some of us are from South American cultures. Some of us are from Northern European cultures. Some of us are from African cultures. Some of us are from uh, Asian cultures. Some of us are from, from near Asian cultures. There are a myriad of different ways of working the craft. Some of us use psalms. Some of us use ancient grimoires. But the only thing that you have to worry about is, does it work? (laughs) Did it help me? Do I feel better? Am I seeing results? Is my life working better because of doing it? Am I a happier person because I'm doing these practices? Do I have more joy? Do I have more prosperity? Do I have more health? Am I getting along better with people? Am I overcoming abusive relationships? Are things working out for me better as a result of what I'm doing? If the answer is yes, yay, you're on the right track. If the answer is no, maybe you should try something else. Either try something else or maybe ask for help in learning how to do something that you're doing differently. So when you're out there on the Wicca sphere, <laughs> it's really easy to get very confused and to think that, that um, everybody knows something because everybody's doing something. But just because everybody's doing it doesn't mean that it's right for you. Okay, And just because somebody's doing something that looks different doesn't mean that it's wrong. Even some people that are involved in the traditional witchcraft that that looks very different than a lot of the Wicca that many people are used to online, um, are still they still get very elitist about it. Elitism is is a road to nowhere. It really is a road to nowhere. Those people that say, "Oh no, you have to be born into it. You have to be born into it." That's not true. There is no such thing as true witch blood in that regard. Witch blood is true, but witch blood exists outside of genetics. It, and it also exists outside of pedigree. You can't access true power through pedigree. It doesn't ultimately matter who initiated you or who you studied with or, or what your line of ordination is necessarily, because wisdom happens through direct contact with spirit. Power happens through direct contact with spirit. And there's a lot of different techniques and methods for doing that, that that you might find that work for you, but you can't say that the craft gives you power because you're with a a specific family, or you're hanging out with a specific tradition. It happens because of your connection with spirit. You are free at all times to be the witch that you want to be. You are free at all times to be the witch that you want to be. And if there are certain practices that you want to incorporate into your craft, nobody can say no to you. If there's certain practices that you don't find appealing, nobody can say that you have to do them. Be aware that you are free and that you are powerful and that there is great benefit in studying 
certain systems necessarily, just because systems in of themselves can be very powerful for helping you uh, uh, g- gain more skill, but that the systems themselves are also limited, but you are not. You are not. And that ultimately, it's up to you and your relationship with spirit. And all is well, and you have nothing to worry about, and you're just fine. You're in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing, and nobody nobody has the right to tell you whether you're authentic or whether you're inauthentic. The only thing that can show that to you is your results. All right. Well, thank you for spending a little time with me today. Much love and many blessings. Mm